The following is from the uh, seat of the Ontario government, known as Queen's Park. Queen's Park land doesn't belong to the government. It belongs to the University of Toronto, the former site of Toronto's oldest school, King's College, in the early 1800s. Higher learning too early for the small city as the college fails and the building becomes abandoned. Now it'd be repurposed a few years later in 1856. They put up wires over the windows, opened the musty building, and locked for something more related to government activities today. An insane asylum. Eighty women moved in with, I quote, female troubles. Now this is actually true, that the men who ran the asylum would commit women for problems such as childbirth, lactation, and menstrual disorders, or as they put it, the cause of insanity in women. Thank goodness it didn't last. Years later, the land is leased to the city of Toronto. Cost? One dollar per year on a thousand-year lease. 10.5 million bricks, each and every one crafted by Canadian prison inmates, went into the construction of Queen's Park. Put together by architect Richard Waite, who was criticized for making the building look too American. In the end, no one cared, and it opened in 1893. Two Types of Ghost Stories There are two types of ghost stories. Over the top and hard to believe like a horror movie. Then there's more legit, subtle experiences. Believable with proof and real people. This building has both. Over the top, women of the asylum. The basement walls and stone date back to the woman's asylum. Two women remain. They're believed to be the tortured spirits haunting the rooms and halls. First seen, the first is seen in a sheer long white dress. She's desperate, running up to you and reaching out to stop you as if uh, she wants out of the asylum and for some reason thinks you can help. When right up against your face, she disappears. Another woman in the basement halls wearing a checkered dress and white apron, but this one is shy pulling her apron over her face and turning away before disappearing. Hard to believe? We agree. But what about this next one? Easy to believe. Charles. At Halloween, a tradition is for staff to bring family and friends in for ghost tours, walking around the building for spirited stories wrapped in history. Even the most serious politician in Queen's Parks believes there are ghosts. On one Halloween, a small group was stopped outside an empty council chamber room. The guide telling the history, when a man in the back yells over the group, I saw someone in the chamber. I think I heard the name Charles. The group was scared, but none so scared as the tour guide himself. He recognized the name because there is a ghost in that chamber room named Charles. Charles Rutherford. He was a military man and sergeant-at-arms for Ontario in the 1930s. He was respected by all inside Queen's Park for some legendary stories from World War I. He fought at Somme, and then badly injured in another battle, before rushing his healing just in time to fight at Vimy Ridge. So respected, he became a Canadian legend. Taking down a German camp While on patrol in France late at night, Charles stumbles into a German camp. Forty-five men surrounded him, all nervous and pointing guns. Charles thought quick, summoned up his courage, and yelled out in German, You are my prisoners. Drop your guns. My men have you surrounded. And for some reason, they believed him. They put down their guns, and Charles kicked them away, and with just one gun, he led all forty-five Germans back to the Canadian camp. Charles Rutherford was a proud Canadian and most enjoyed his time at Queen's Park, believed to still serve Canada today. Bonus Story The Statue of King Edward This is the most impressive statue of Queen's Park. The depiction of King Edward upon his steed used to stand in India, and that's when Gandhi happened. All English statues were set to be destroyed, but thankfully a Toronto collector saved this one and had it shipped over. Originally offered to the Royal Ontario Museum, the ROM, but they declined. It was then given space in the park, and since stands as a proud symbol to our English roots. And my goal here? Make sure you never see it that way again. For some knew Edward more for his weakness than accomplishments. For lack of a better term, I'd have to say, 
his sexual desires. Now, started right from a young age in his affair with a famous older English actress named Nellie Clifton. His parents, Albert and Queen Victoria, were against it. This led to a father-son talk as they walked through a garden in the rain. But Edward didn't listen to his father even after Albert got sick. His dad would die from pneumonia. The Queen believed stress of this tryst with Nellie and the rain caused his death. She never fully forgave her son. But it didn't slow his desire. Even after Edward was married, he'd cheat on his wife. Some women of note include Lady Churchill, the American mother of Winston, and Alice Keppel. Now, you might not recognize her name, but Hamiltonians would recognize her mother. Sophia McNabb was the daughter of Alan McNabb and raised in Hamilton's Dundurn Castle. Or maybe you'd recognize her great-granddaughter, Camilla Bowes, the current wife of Sir Charles. It said Alice's husband knew of the affair, and he made sure to leave the house when the king wanted a uh, special visit. Now, try not thinking of that next time you walk past the statue. <laughs>